Hey guys, Amazing Game Pro here, picking back up with my Final Fantasy IV The After Years playthrough, where I'm jumping into the later part of the Gathering portion of this game. Here are my main objectives to make it through the game better, which isn't actually a storyline required area, but it's still pretty important to go through the game for two reasons. One is that we get a couple of pieces of really awesome equipment for Edge near the end of this area, and two, which is really even more important, is that we get the Tails here by trading with the Tail Collector. I've talked about the Tails a little bit before, promising a full explanation later, but later's come, so I feel like it's time for me to really tell you guys what my strategy here is. Throughout the gathering, I've been picking up a bunch of obscurely hidden items called Small Tails. There are 21 in total, I already have 20, and 21st is in this cave. The Tail Collector, midway through this cave, is willing to trade seven of these for any individual colored tail of my choice, other than Pink Tail, which is a special item you have to get through in entirely different means, or 14 for a Rainbow Tail. Contrary to how this construction may seem, one of these tails is special, but it's not the Rainbow Tail. The one that's special is actually the Blue Tail. The story with the Blue Tail is, is that the other tail trader I'm going to meet halfway through the final dungeon is willing to trade that blue tail for a blue armor. The blue armor is the second best piece of armor available to any male character in the game, other than Kalka, but no one cares about Kalka. He's totally irrelevant to any possible strategic considerations. Now, the first best piece of armor for any male or any character at all is Adamant armor which is completely beyond my grasp. And all other armor for any other character is wildly superior to adamant armor and blue armor. So the fact that I'm going to be able to get some blue armor is going to help me out a whole lot. Every other tail you can get from this collector trades for one of the ring items. The rings are equipped over your glove slot, and they all give you relatively marginal stat bonuses for some special effect. Now, special effects can vary a lot in utility. For instance, the tail I could have gotten in Edward's tail by running around and gathering all those bronze tails and then farming a couple drops and all that tedious stuff would have gotten me the gill band too. From the gold tail. But that's not really useful to me because that just gets me more money from encounters and what do I care about that, honestly? So, what I'm going to go for is two blue tails for the armor, and then a white tail which trades for the Rapid Ring V2. The deal with the Rapid Ring V2 is that it increases the charge time of any move. That means spells cast faster, command moves like jump come out faster. And I'm going to check my inventory just to verify these because this is a very important point, and I have one. Now, I'm not entirely sure how I need to use this Rapid Ring. There's actually a lot of different ways you could use it, but it's very powerful. And just having strategic flexibility is important going into this game, because, to be honest, there's a lot of different ways stuff can go in this game. And it's usually not obvious up front exactly how you're going to do things until you're doing it. Especially given that you have such freedom over which character you can bring to the game. So having an item like this that can make any character who relies on past time or special moves a lot better, which is of course really broad, instantly is really exciting. But those aren't going to get to play out for quite a while, because, like I said, the guy who trades is halfway through the final dungeon. Then again, we're very close to the final dungeon, so... While it is still a ways, it's less of a ways than you might suspect. For now, though, I have to get through this cave, and... The enemies are being kind of a jerk, but I think I'll live. There is a place I'm able to use tents later on, and that'll be important because I can go into the Marquis Marlboro at the end as well prepared as possible. Yeah. 
and even though I'm using a fair number of consumables to keep alive, I really do have just an excessive supply of things like high potions. That's on purpose, though, because I've known all along that an item like that can be very important to my future success and happiness, so I make sure to keep a good supply for a rainy day. And here I'm going to cycle the lunar cycle four times back to full moon, which I'm not sure if it's truly the best choice. Which you'll see why, because Golbez actually can't output damage as reliably as I'd like in this fight. But it does reduce the damage the enemy does to most of his attacks, and that probably overall makes it worth it. Uh, fairy claws off edge for the cure up. That just powers him up an awful lot. And now we see this scene, because our path to the Tower of Babel is blocked. And there's actually no way through. We're never going to get through. But there is a guard anyway that we are going to get to kill. That's our friend, the Marquis of Alvaro. Which, unlike everything else we fought so far, this guy actually can't be inflicted with stop, so we're going to have to fight him the honest way. Start off by using that very powerful band with everyone else and having gold bed to a spider zone. There's a high chance he counters with reflect. He didn't, but that was just really good luck. If Reflex not up, that Golbez caps by Ravka. If it is, obviously then. We won't ever counter the band though, so it's a really powerful option to go to, as long as you have the MP to do it. And this has actually gone really well. Unfortunately, he just killed Luka. So I'm gonna have to go into improv mode. Hopefully he's close to dead now. So I won that. But as you can see, if he chooses to Earthquake a lot, or keeps Reflect up, or does both, that guy can become nasty. If you don't know what you're doing to kill him fast, have fun. But this black cow I got, the Kiku Ichimanji, that's a mouthful, that I got from him are both really nice upgrades for him. He is now a very powerful character. I'm gonna throw an emergency exit to get out of here because our work's done. And there's one more thing we have to do before the story will let us go to Baron Castle, and it's something we want to do anyway. That's stopped by this, which is of course the only town we haven't been to yet. And it is, fittingly enough, covered in this. But we know what causes the mist of mist. It's the mist dragon. And since we've rescued all the other Eidolons, though if you killed them, it just happens too, then we're going to get back the mist dragon Viridia. Which, those who played the original might remember, the mist dragon is her best low ranking Aeon. Or not Aeon, Eidolon, I'm sorry. Aeon's a very different thing. But, it's not as good as Leviathan or Bahamut. We're not going to get those back for quite a while. 
though it is better than Titan, and it will be immediately useful to us. Because right after this, we're going to be on our way to what is a very dangerous boss fight, and Rydia, with her summons back, is going to be an important component to our victory. Though, before we leave this, we can loot it. The bomb core right there, and two bomb cranks in here. None of those are really very good items, but they're free, and free is such a wonderful word. Now we just need to prep for the boss fight. We'll want to stay in the bed only three times to get to waxing them. Because waxing is the correct lunar phase for this boss. And of course, since it's a storming barren castle, as you might guess, the party arrangement gets pretty chaotic. To spoil it a bit, Luca will not be participating, so we want to strip her. And we're going to give her ribbon to Rydia. And we want to make sure Golbez resists as many elements as he can. Which basically means the diamond shield needs to be re replaced with either the flame shield or the ice shield. I'm going to go with the ice shield. And just hope that I don't see Blazaga targeted at Golbez too much. Actually, there's one other thing we need to do, and that's replace the blue armor with the diamond armor. So Edge resists at least one thing. And of course, as nice as the Shinobi gear is for running away quickly, that black belt team gives him the power he needs. And I'm going to break segment here. So I'll be able to go into this fight full force next time. See you then.